Yo, this video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. While everyone can imagine a stand-up comedian telling jokes on stage, there are a ton of misunderstandings and lack of knowledge around what the profession actually entails. As an example, a little known upside to stand-up comedy is that the earnings you make are entirely tax-free. This is because there aren't any. So, if you want to do stand-up comedy, the first thing you have to do is write your material, which is the bits you'll be doing and the jokes you have in each bit. Now, your material really is your bread and butter, and this is why 80% of your time as a comic is spent alone at home in front of a blank Word document trying to figure out what to say so people will like you. It's basically middle school but with extra steps. Keep in mind you have to really watch out for when a really good joke comes too easily because then you've probably stolen it. This is what comedians call the Schumer effect and it happens to even the best comics. If this happens to you, the only real solution is to ask yourself, is it wrong to steal other people's work? And then you change the words a little bit. So next you have to work on your delivery or how you're going to say the jokes. This is one of the most important parts of comedy and I like to think of it like dominoes. Even if what you have to offer is objectively mediocre, with good delivery you can still satisfy a room full of drunk people. At its core, having good delivery is all about doing your set with complete confidence that everyone's going to laugh, even if all your friends and family have told you they won't. A good trick is thinking of it as theater and you're just acting out a character with complete commitment. As a personal example, one character that I've developed is what I'm doing now. A very very dry, monotone, slightly sarcastic voice that makes it sound like I don't want to live another day on this planet. The way I came up with this character was by recording myself saying the jokes in a bunch of different ways, playing them back, and then deciding I'd just be myself. So, the final component of stand-up is by far the most difficult, actually doing it. Apparently, some surveys have shown that the number one most common fear is public speaking, and the number two is the fear of death. And to those people, I say, why not both? Nevertheless, it's extremely normal to get anxious before going on stage and worrying that your nerves are going to ruin your performance. If this happens, just remind yourself that your material isn't very good, so you'll probably bomb anyway. If it's any consolation, many people say that the first time they were on stage, they were so nervous it felt like they were naked in front of everyone. And when you think about it, your first time on stage really is kind of like you're doing your first cam show. You don't know how to act, you don't know what to say, you're covered with sweat, there's a big black thing in your mouth, and the only person watching is your uncle. Now, one of the biggest fears of new comedians is getting heckled, which is when someone from the audience yells something to interrupt the performance. And one of the worst things you can do when you get heckled is apologize. Like, I've seen a lot of new comics make a handicap joke or something a little distasteful, and someone says, Hey, I'm in a wheelchair. And the comic is like, Oh my god, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean... This is a mistake, because then you lose your comedic license for the rest of the set. A better response would have been, Wow, I didn't realize, man. Why don't you come up on stage and we'll talk about it? And then everyone will think you're really compassionate until they get to the stairs. Now, when you finish your routine and the audience member is done clapping, hopefully the manager will say, here's enough money to get drunk with the service industry guys. In stand-up, this is called the honeymoon phase because... Well, that's as good as it's going to get, but also because you end up with a distorted view of reality. The next day you'll go and tell someone about how you got wasted after your first real stand-up gig, and they'll say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And you'll be thinking, wait, what? I thought that was cool. But then you can't quit. You become addicted to the rush of performing, the high of getting an audience to laugh, stand-up permeates the rest of your life whether you want it to or not, every school or office presentation suddenly becomes your stage, you prepare material for every date in order to hone your craft, you study the work of your most successful contemporaries, all until one day you finally get the call and it's all paid off. You're rewarded with respect from your peers and your legacy lives on forever in the world of comedy. But until then, smash that like button, leave a comment, hit subscribe, and ring the bell to get the latest notifications. I'll be at the bar. Once again, thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and keeping the dream alive. ExpressVPN itself is a service that lets you safely reroute your IP address to nearly anywhere in the world. Meaning if you're in Canada like me and can't watch Saturday Night Live, in just one click you can be watching my future high-level material. With dedicated servers in 94 countries, your data is completely encrypted and 100% anonymous, meaning you can also safely watch your cam shows over public Wi-Fi or at an airport without risking your private information or your behavior being tracked by individuals, corporations, or the government. Government. Not only that, but their speeds are consistently faster than any other VPN provider, and is rated number one by some of the most notable tech review websites. So if you'd like to give it a go, you can find out how you can get three months for free by clicking the link in the description box below, or by going to expressvpn.com forward slash casually explained.